Today we're going to talk about the rotation plasty or the Van Ness rotation plasty. It's called a few different names. It's a very interesting surgical procedure. So we're going to talk about what it is, how it works, and most importantly, why this is done. So let's get into it. Well, what is this procedure? Why is it used? It's done to salvage a lower limb, usually due to bone cancer, Ewing sarcoma, osteosarcoma, and this is cancer of the femur. Specifically, this is why this is used. Now, this bone cancer can be in all sorts of different places, but the femur is the bone of choice due to the type of surgery needed. This can also be used for a femur malformation at birth in children. As you can see here, this femur is hooked when it should be, if we go over here, it should be straight. But here we're just gonna talk about the bone cancer portion. And towards the end, we will talk about how this procedure is done, why it's done, the way it's done. Really, why is it that this foot is turned 180 degrees? As I mentioned before, this is done because of bone cancer. So osteosarcoma, cancer of the bone. This is a very rare bone cancer. Cancer we know to be an unregulated excessive growth of cells in the body. Now this cancer specifically originates in the bone. This is important because cancer can spread or metastasize to all sorts of different organs and organ systems. In this case, this cancer starts in the bone instead of coming into the bone from another body system. The patient population tends to be about 10 to 30 years old. Obviously in this case, this patient they're a lot younger. It is the most common type of childhood bone cancer. Now osteosarcoma can occur in the femur or the thigh bone, the tibia or the shin bone, or the humerus, the upper arm bone. There are about a thousand cases every year. Half are children and teens, and males tend to get it more than females. Let's zoom in here and look at what's going on. So you can see we have some metal devices to stabilize this bone but this child's leg is obviously a lot shorter and it's twisted around. So for me, this is a really interesting portion and we'll talk about why that is. Let's go to this picture right here and get a little detail. So as you can see, if we zoom in, we have this cancer spreading at the bottom of the femur within the knee, or a little bit above the knee. This needs to be cut off, but at the same time, the patient needs to have a good quality of life and needs a functioning leg. So the whole goal is to create a new knee. So let's talk about how this works. So let's get into this surgical procedure. Let's zoom in here. I'm gonna try my best to explain it as best as I can. I mentioned before that the goal is to transform the ankle into a new knee. This is the most common form of rotation plasty, and we're aiming for a couple things, to remove the cancer, to maintain the blood vessels and the nerves, and to orient the leg as best as possible to provide the most natural functioning as far as mobility is concerned. Let's go to A over here. So we have this tumor. So chemotherapy will help regulate this tumor if chemotherapy needs to be used, but it needs to be cut off and taken care of. So if we're at B here, we see that this portion is permanently removed while keeping the blood vessels and the nerves because we need that blood flow and we need sensation because again, we're trying to maintain the best quality of life as possible. Then we have the interesting piece. This calf and foot is turned 180 degrees. D here, the foot is pointed backwards. We have metal implants that stabilize this piece to allow for proper healing. And then here the thigh and calf muscles connect because we're trying to establish a functioning leg. So we need the motion of the new knee and we need those muscles to guide the mobility. So let's compare this real quick. So we see this foot is turned backwards. And as you can see, it'll function as a new knee because it'll allow the foot to move back like a normal knee would. So let's go back to A here. Normally, when we walk, it allows this lower portion to move back to provide a smooth mobility. Going back to E here, this is the whole goal. This is the reason why the foot is not kept in the same direction because it wouldn't provide a natural function like a regular knee. So as I said before, let's zoom in a little bit. So this ankle joint functions as a new knee. A prosthetic leg and foot is fitted this is custom made because every patient is different. So if we're going here, 
I forgot to mention the calf and foot will grow as the child gets older. And here we see that natural curve that the knee offers. Now, obviously this leg's not completely straight, but it'll allow for this leg to move back to provide that natural mobility. So now we've removed the cancer, we've attached the lower portion of the leg, and now we have a new functioning knee that's actually the ankle. So let's move on and talk about the quality of life, how well it works, and complications. With any surgical procedure, there needs to be effectiveness. And I keep mentioning this, but the patient's quality of life is very important, which is why the procedure is done the way it is. Recovery takes about three to six months. It does take longer with chemotherapy. Physical therapy is of the utmost importance because now the patient has to learn how to function with this new knee. And again, because of the way it's designed, it will naturally lead to a function similar to things beforehand with the old knee. And then the prosthesis is put on after healing. There's a lot of steps to this recovery process. Then the risks, the immediate risks could be deep vein thrombosis or a certain type of blood clot, reduced blood flow, blood pooling in the veins. During healing, you could get infections, especially of the bone in that area that's healing. Fractures, prosthesis problems, if it's not fit on well, or maybe the prosthesis is put on too soon, or the thigh and the shin don't fuse. What's great is that there are always an experienced team of doctors working together in concert to watch for complications and help the patient recover as best as possible. Most patients do very well. Again, the goal is leg functionality, stability, and mobility to be restored as best as possible. And as I mentioned before, we have to factor in that bone growth. And then hopefully we have a better quality of life. Although this is a rough situation to be in, it's great to have a procedure that can restore natural functioning. So let's go through the summary and review what we learned. We first talked about how this is a surgical procedure done to salvage the lower limb of the leg due to bone cancer. We then talked about bone cancers. This specific type is very rare. This patient population is 10 to 30 years old, is the most common childhood bone cancer. And this procedure is done to eliminate this cancer and offer a better quality of life. Then we got into the surgical procedure where cutting off that cancer, maintaining those blood vessels and nerves, twisting that leg to provide that new knee, natural knee function. And then we put it all together and we fit it in a prosthetic, which will, as I mentioned before, help that natural function that a normal knee would have. Then we talked about recovery being about three to six months, physical therapy being very important. We spoke about the risks, reduced blood flow, fractures, prosthesis problems, but most patients do well. And we have that functionality, stability, and mobility back to normal. Well, at least as close to normal as possible. So that's all I got. I hope you guys learned something new about this very interesting procedure. I've seen children with this, but it was really cool for me to do some research to figure out how all this works, especially with the, the surgery. It's very, very interesting. So thank you guys so much for watching and listening. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends, and I'll be back soon with another video.